so the Transformers movies are particularly well known for how well they're loved worldwide rather than just in America. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about kind of formulating that global appeal? Obviously, you shoot a lot of it across a lot of different countries, but are there any other things you keep in mind? Well, I think the value systems of almost every culture have a lot of stri a lot of crossover. You know, everybody has very specific things that are specific to their culture, but I think it's like honor and courage and bravery and brotherhood and the things that really Transformers stands for and those kinds of movies, they travel because of, because of their uh, value system. Mm. And it's not a, okay, we're going to make it because, boy, the French love this or the Chinese love this. It's like everybody values those certain values. Mm. I enjoyed this film a lot because quite a bit was filmed in my hometown, Oxford. Uh -huh. So it was yeah. very nice seeing yeah. all of that, yeah. all of that on the big screen. Yeah. Um, how, what, what were the kind of the the benefits of filming in the UK? What were the things that were really kind of cool about I mean, that? The UK has such a unique architecture. I mean, you know, the United States we're such a young country, relatively speaking, you know, and so. I think the, the variety is here is also spectacular. So, you know, we shot in uh, a church in, built in 1240. We shot in a castle in Scotland. We shot on the Isle of Skye. You know, we went to Stonehenge. And, you know, these things are legendary. Um, and they're also visually very uh, stunning. And so it really gave the texture of the movie a whole other experience. And we were hoping for that. And kind of touching on history as well, we see mm -hmm. some of Bumblebee's past, and yeah. Bumblebee, I believe his spin-off movie is filming next month, it starts filming? It starts in August, yes. Uh, can you give us any kind of idea of what to expect from his solo adventures? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think it's, um, I don't want to give away too much about it, but uh, I think we are making a very distinctly different kind of Transformers movie. It's a more intimate movie, it's, uh, it's a little bit like Iron Giant, which I worked with on many years ago. Uh, it is a smaller story, but it's still about these larger issues, and these still the, the same sort of titanic clashes occur, but is a female lead. Um, the relationship that she and Bumblebee develop is very different than one we've seen before. And so I think uh, people are gonna love the intimacy of that movie in contrast to still some of the big wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, you know? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that's very popular right now because of the superhero genre is uh, a shared universe, so getting everyone together for a mm -hmm. team-up movie, then splitting everyone yes. off. But is that kind of a challenge for Transformers to take uh, a, a Transformer out of that ensemble? Um, um, well, we're going to find that out. But, uh, <laughs> no, you know, I think this movie opened it up. You know, the whole idea of bringing the Arthurian legend into it sort of said you could do a lot of different things with Transformers that we really weren't so sure about at first. And, and frankly, didn't have the imagination in a way of getting there until our fifth movie. Uh, you know, and when you see little glimpses of Bumblebee in World War II, you're like, wow, Bumblebee, you know? So you could see that as a standalone idea, there are plenty out there that exist. And I think that's where uh, the shared universe notion plays out into this. And Age of Extinction obviously had set up for this movie by kind of mentioning the knights and alluding to them and then Optimus Prime leaving to find his creators. Yes. And then in this movie there's a tease that there's, they haven't yet uncovered all the secrets on Earth. Yes. So is that already plotted out, that uh, the eventual uncovering of that no, secret? No, not necessarily. I mean, we have some ideas, but that, that may or may not play out into the next movie. You know, we're, we're, really, we're really waiting to see how the audience responds to this movie and what elements that they really love. Because one of the things that we found as filmmakers was there was a great freedom to suddenly break sort of the simplistic uh, Decepticon versus Autobots, you know, and now Arthurian legend, now knights and humans have a real role, you know, and that was really exciting for us. So I think we want to keep pushing out. So <laughs> I don't think you can anticipate that necessarily we'll do a movie in, se in sequence. Mm. Where would you kind of start with coming up with uh, a Transformers movie? Do you start with uh, a particular image or a particular set piece or just a single idea? Um, I think each one has been slightly different, but it, usually it's some kind of emotional construct. You know, the first movie was Boy Gets Car Gets Girl. That was sort of where it started, you know. Um, you know, in this one, I think it took on a larger ambition, which was uh, both the fusing of the Arthurian legend with the Transformers legend. They, ironically, they stand for quite the same things, honor, courage, brotherhood, you mm -hmm. know, um, s s truth. So um, you start and then it just starts getting bigger on you, you know, and uh, so it's really fun. There's a sort of a discovery to it.